Jonathan showed me his platform and his system. I was really just pretty, pretty blown away by what they've got going on to help companies recruit in a way that saves the company a lot of time and money and promotes longevity with their, their employees. So um, with that said, Jonathan, I'll just let you take it from here, man. Yeah, perfect. And uh, appreciate the invitation. I promise there's no product pitch coming, but we are going to talk about recruiting and it's a problem that every organization has. Just a little background. <clears throat> I wrote this, uh, a book called The Sales Boss. It was published by Wiley. Uh, and they asked me to write that after I had built and sold a couple of companies. And the reason I share that is twofold. One is uh, I know deeply that uh, part of the business that is getting the people part of the business right. It doesn't matter how great a idea you have or the product you're selling. What it comes down to is can you get people right uh, behind the idea and bringing their talent and energy to the organization to build. Sounds good. Uh, I'm currently serving as the CEO, CEO of a company called Who Hire, and we're completely focused on this area of recruiting. I'm going to share my screen. And to start out, I'm just gonna share a quick uh, video to just sort of set the mood for us here on a Friday evening. The most notable achievements stand as testimony to the power of human potential. The potential to dream, to have an idea, the potential to work, to celebrate, to challenge, whether alone or as part of a community, the power of human potential to push on when one wishes to quit, to resist when necessary, to inspire when called upon, the potential to comfort and start over. to win despite the odds, to overcome and achieve the once unthinkable. It's an awesome thing to see human potential realized. Think about your own human potential. What is it you want to be remembered for? What will you create when you elevate the human potential in yourself and in all of those around you? It is truly an awesome thing to see human potential realized. And when you think about the things that are accomplished when you're able to get humans, even yourself, reaching their full potential, it's really mind-blowing. Uh, something that brought that to mind this morning, I, uh, my wife runs an animal rescue, and so we have a ton of animals on our property. And so occasionally I, the duty of taking care of those animals fall to me. And so I, uh, this morning I had to go out and feed our two miniature donkeys. Uh, and there's a whole story about that that I will share an, another time with you. She was, uh, she saw a woman beating a donkey and she, uh, one of our neighbors, and she uh, says to me, uh, I'm not letting that donkey stay there one more night. I said, what are you gonna go do, steal the donkey? Well, we have a donkey. So you know how that story ended. But I was out there and uh, I'm putting water in. I live in the middle of the desert here in Phoenix and I start the hose and I'm letting it drain into, you know, one of those metal bins, right? The Think of it like a horse trough and I can hear the sound of the water hitting that bin. And while it's filling up there, I'm on my cell phone and I'm skimming through Facebook and checking my messages. And then it occurs to me, I'm in the middle of the desert and I can turn a knob on a faucet and for fractions of a penny, I can get water in the middle of the desert while I'm connecting to seven satellites that are delivering my gifts around the planet. Isn't that amazing? Like all of those things came from human potential.
Like somebody had the idea that I should be able to get water in the middle of the desert for pennies. And somebody thought we should be able to communicate around the globe instantly. And because they were able to get other people to buy into that idea and put energy and effort behind it, we now have what is the modern world. Now think about that. These are the same humans that show up in your business, that power the results in your organization. And when we talk about cracking the human code, really, if you get it right, nothing else is impossible. And so we're going to spend our time in that. We're going to uh, talk about recruiting in general. We're going to get into some very specifics uh, for roofing companies as you think about how you go about your recruiting. Fair? And uh, you feel welcome to come off mute, jump in uh, all you want. Uh, I, I mentioned that I'm the author of The Sales Boss. I realize there's only one advantage to being a published author, and that is that you get to quote yourself from time to time. So I'm going to quote myself. My grandfather used to say business would be easy if it wasn't for the people. And I've changed that a lo little bit. Uh, and I go with people are unique, but they're predictably unique. Meaning that as we study people and human behavior, we can get really good at predicting how they're going to operate in our environment and, uh, and how they're going to grow as humans. So the valuation of your business is directly tied to the quality of your people. So the single most important system in your business is the one that you put for identifying, recruiting, hiring, and training the team. Indeed, I would say that no matter what the business that you're in, whether it's roofing or uh, any other business is, the business of people, right? The other thing is just the widget. It's sort of how you get a return on the investment you put into people. So we've been hearing a lot about AI lately. It seems to be all the rage. How is AI going to tr you know, transform your business? Uh, the company that I'm involved with, we've actually been involved in AI over the last seven years. And I've been obsessed with how does AI give us an advantage when it comes to the people part of the problem? And so what is AI uh, really when you think about it, right? Because people put all sorts of measures around it. And for many people, when they think AI, now they're thinking chat GPT. But really, have you ever been like uh, at, a, at an airport, sitting in the plane, you look out the window, you start to take off. And when you first look out the window, all you can see is sort of the buildings there. It might not even be clear where you're at, but as you get enough elevation, what happens? It might be like the picture that's on your screen now, you start noticing these big circles and you go, ah, I'm in Kansas City, I'm over cornfields, or right, I'm in, over wheat fields. And you, you start getting this sense of where you're at. And that's really the way to think about AI. AI is really just pattern recognition on a grand scale. It's math and pattern recognition. So as you get high enough, you're able to get this perspective that from the ground was completely impossible. And that's the capability that AI is unlocking for us is really to look across massive amounts of data and simplify it into solutions that are not obvious for us. And so as a company, we build prediction models and the patterns that we're looking at are what causes performance in certain kinds of humans inside of organizations. And so we have completed in 2023, the largest research study focused on trade employees in home services companies. So think HVAC, plumbing, electrical, roofing, solar. And we used actual field results, meaning we assessed thousands and thousands of people actually doing the job. We pulled in actual data out of systems, a record like Service Titan. We got managers to rate their employees. And we're trying to answer this question, could we use data analytics and artificial intelligence to approve hiring outcomes? And so I'm gonna share with you a couple of findings from that that get really specific about the kind of human that you're looking for in your roofing business. So uh, when we went to that population of humans, these are the sort of things that we measured. We have about 450 traits. They're all research validated. They're coming out of academia. These are things that science tell us are consistent in humans over time, and you can measure them with an online questionnaire. So I won't read that whole list to you, but I'm going to use this 
uh, phrase of psychometrics, right? And that's what this means. These sort of things, like somebody's bounce back ability, like how quick do they come back from stress? Their dark personality, right? Uh, you've heard the term narcissist. So how many narcissistic te uh, tendencies? How are, how's their competitiveness? How, what's their self-reliance? Would it be nice to know all these things about somebody you're about to hire? Would be, right? Really hard to get out of a interview. But even if you knew these things, what you wouldn't know is which of these actually matter for your roofing salesperson, the person that's going to canvas or the person that's going to sit down with the homeowner. So we got this rich uh, data set from humans and literally they sat down, took about a two hour psychographic assessment. And then we got the it, it, also things like this. And then we got their actual performance for those same humans. So we stack ranked those inside of performance bands and we're feeding that into a machine learning engine, much like you think it's the same science uh, that you use for actuarial science, right? Where big health insurance companies try to say, who's going to die from cancer, right? And who's going to get this disease? So they can they can safely place their bets, right? And, and, and distribute that risk. We're using that same science just compared to humans. And so then we output which of those are actually correlated. So what you're seeing on your screen now is what millions of data points tell us matter for a roofing salesperson. That's it. That's what you're looking for. So you see on the on this outside here where self-confidence and consciousness weight much heavier than core self-perception and self-esteem, but they're all balanced. So uh, an incoming candidate in our system would take about a 14 minute questionnaire. And we're going to look at things like gentleness, compliance, self-confidence, and we're outputting a score zero to 100, how they're going to perform in that role and also their flight risks. Like how long are they going to stay? So as an example for Mercedes Benz, who's one of our clients, um, because we're doing it all within one organization, we, they have incoming salespeople take an assessment. And our output is this person's going to sell 50 cars a month or 30 cars a month or 12 cars a month. And they're going to stay around 18 months or 24 months or 36 months. And we're getting to within 15% pre-hire. And so we've given you that same power as a home service business owner. High level. These are the sort of things hey, that you're... Jonathan. Yeah. Will you... Will you say that again 15 percent pre-hire specifically 15 percent of of what yeah so for mercedes-benz if we if somebody comes in they take the assessment we say they're going to sell 50 cars a month mm -hmm. we're within 15 percent of that once they show up on the job and they're actually selling cars so they're going to sell somewhere around 35 cars a month 60 cars a month somewhere in that range okay i wanted to make sure i was tracking and also for anybody who is watching yeah. or is going to participate I wanted to make sure we were really clear because that was a really cool thing the first yeah. time we spoke. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So the no, no, interrupt this. It can be interactive. So these are the these are the core eight on the screen. There are other things that come into play here. Uh, are those surprising or did that ring true for you when you think about your roofing salespeople? what these these particular yeah, eight these particular ones yeah these particular eight uh let's see sort of interesting right when you really start thinking about what drives success so the first rule yeah. of recruiting and i'll just move on and you can and you can do this even without our system but the first rule of, of recruiting is to be hyper clear on exactly what it is that you're looking for, not using shorthand, using data. So the data tells us that in order for somebody to be a high performing sales rep in home services, specifically in this one for roofing, they have to seek feedback. They have to have a positive self belief. They have to be gentle and kind, meaning they approach life with kindness, calmness, compassion. Most people don't associate that with a roofing salesperson, right? It's the gentle giant. Um, they're socially tolerant, meaning that they have generally agreeable relationships with other people. They'd rather uh, cooperate than compete. And then you add in things like hardworking, self-starter, happy and optimistic, and a really strong self-esteem. So let's talk then about now that we have the profile of who we're looking for, specific 
uh, to do's around recruitment success. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the mindset. The mindset that's crucial for recruiting is that you're writing a half a million dollar check for every interview where you say yes. Yes, meaning I'm going to move them on to the next stage. Why a half a million dollar check? That's the seriousness of your of these decisions. Remember that the human component is how your business is going to be valued. Your growth rate as an organ as an organization is going to be based on your people. So arguably, no decision is more important than this. Now, how seriously, Jenna, would you take it if you knew that after our meeting today, based on you bringing me on board or not, you had to write a half a million dollar check? How seriously would you take that? I wish I could take it seriously, but it's definitely motivating. It's kind of like the what you want, um, but I wouldn't find it, you know, realistic of where I was, you know, yeah, doing. But I, that would be what I would want to do. Yeah, you would. Wouldn't you, as an owner, take it really seriously? Yes, as an owner, right? 100%. if you had to write a personal half a million dollar check. This stands in stark contrast to what I see happening in contractors organizations where they're like, oh, fuck, I, I got somebody showing up for a 12 o'clock interview. Where's their resume? And there's this mad scramble around. Let, let me get together and let me get prepped for this interview. So first and foremost, with your hiring team, with your leadership team, you need to set the direction that there is nothing more important in their business day than this conversation they're going to have with a human making a decision about whether they're going to join your team single most important thing there's no client that's more important than that there's nothing else on on their plate that's more important and if you can set that tone you're going to see a drastic reduction in your turnover rate and a higher success of people coming into your organization so first half a million dollar check second the mindset is that your job is to keep imposters off the team mistake that you see people make they bring somebody in for an interview their own need to be liked gets in the way and they start pitching this person on why xyz company is so great for them why they should come to work it's a different mindset if you believe that your job is towards your company and the health of your company and the health of your work family to keep imposters off the team because what does an imposter do to your company they burn through leads, they burn through relationships, they damage relationships, and they're a drag on your organization in terms of training and development resources. The third thing, rely on data and less on gut and intuition. So have a framework by which you're rating the candidates that come through your door. You might use a system like ours, right, where we're giving you data and we're giving you projections if you're not using a system for that do you have a structured process that you're grading people by otherwise those decisions are going to largely be made on robert i like your hat and it'll be so subconscious that i'm liking this person for something that has nothing to do with their ability to actually do the job that i'm hiring for the final point on mindset always have a drop dead date and clear performance what do i mean by a clear drop dead date it means that i am picking a point in the future and a performance metric that if they haven't made it they're done we're saying goodbye and i'm going to articulate that from the very first interview all the way through Right? So that means you have a standard for people in your organization. So if you have a selling organization, you know how many leads you generate for them, you know what great conversion is within your organization, and you should have a standard of excellence. And we should speak about that. Because a lot of times in roofing, you've got variable compens compensation, right? So somebody joins your organization because they believe they're going to make X or Y. And the fact is, if they're not performing, they're not going to do those things and they will be a drain on your organization. So that's going to sound something like if I was hiring Robert and I'm giving him the job. Now I'm pitching him on the job. I'm going to say, Robert, really looking forward to getting you rocking and rolling in this job. Uh, here's how our conversion metrics work. Here's what I know about myself, Robert. I know in 90 days, as much as I like you now, I'm going to like you even more. I might even love our friendship or I wouldn't be bringing you onto the team. So would it be fair to say in 90 days, if you're not meeting this, that we're just going to say goodbye. 
I'm still going to like you. But we're both entering into this with an expectation. And I know from my company's performance and the health of my company and all the projections I'm making that for this investment in you, I've got to have this sort of return. And I imagine as you're sitting there, Robert, you have some idea of what you need to spend this revenue on and why this job's appealing to you. Is that correct? So in 90 days, whatever that date is, if we're just short of that, let's don't have drama, let's just be done. What impact does that have on the person you're just you're just recruiting, do you think? They get really serious about knowing that you're a performance-based culture and that you know what you expect. And you can do that without being an asshole, right? You're, you can still be kind and have, have a standard. All right, so that's the mindset. Let's go into the job posting and advertisement. So the first portion of this is that you need to know your avatar. What do I mean by that? You have to have a crystal clear picture of who it is you're trying to get to apply and what is their life circumstance. Are you trying to get somebody fresh out of college looking for their first gig or somebody fresh out of high school looking for their first gig? Are you looking for somebody that is currently working for somebody else and they're fed up and they're looking to try something different, right? In the HR world, you know, you're, you're told uh, we can't we can't think about age and race and all of those things. When you think about your job advertisement, you should have a very crystal clear view of who it is that typically succeeds in this role. And you need to be describing that person. So when you write your job ad, you're going to describe the person, not the role. And it has to grab attention. What you see with most job advertisement is they start by talking about the company. They start by talking, we're seeking somebody to do canvassing or we're seeking somebody to do X, Y, Z, and we're committed to the community, right? First off, describe the person, not the role, grab attention. I'm going to give you an example of that. Third thing is when you speak of compensation, especially if there's variable compensation, you never mention 100% commission. I don't think you should ever pay 100% commission. I know in the roofing industry, people are going to throw rocks and stones at me for saying that. I will tell you, if you're paying your roofing salespeople, fresh new roofing salespeople, 100% commission, you are always fielding a team that is less than it could be. You're not getting the best performers that you can get. You might have great, what you believe is great performers. But remember, when we when we have a standard of great, what we really mean is it's the best I've ever experienced. It's the best I've seen, right? I remember when I, I uh, first started traveling for business and I would go rent a car and it was the best day of my life because any car I rented was better than the car I was driving. That's not true anymore, right? Because I have a different point of comparison. Right, so don't allow yourself to think, hey, I'm, I'm paying 100% commission and I get great salespeople. I would propose to you that you have an experience really high level greatness that you could get if you balance a compensation structure. Now, secondly, in the ad, have you ever read an ad that says unlimited earning potential? You can earn north of 200K, uncapped earnings, all of that is blah, 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 the person looking for the ad. They don't believe it and it doesn't motivate them. It's exactly the same. Have you ever been to a retail store where they post a little thing that says, uh, we have competitive wages. What's the shorthand when you read, we have competitive wages at a retail store? We're gonna underpay you, <laughs> right? It, it, it doesn't really mean anything. So when you're going to mention compensation in your ad, this single thing will, up your conversions change the language to you must earn not you can earn so if your total target compensation is 150k or 80k or 200k i'm just going to throw a number out there i don't care what it is it just has to mean something to your avatar and you know what that wage is it should sound like this the successful candidate must earn 120,000 in their first year or they'll no longer work for us have a standard. If you have an A player, somebody that's used to competing, they're gonna hear that and it's believable. 
right? Now, when they get into your office, you can explain the breakdown. There's this space, there's this commission, there's this variable. But in your ad, you have to say, you must earn, not can earn, and we won't keep you if you don't. You'll literally have people show up for the interview and say, the only reason I applied is because you were so confident that you could help people be successful in what they would earn. Now, when you're writing that ad, must earn 120K, 150K, whatever it is, or you will no longer work for us, there's a really important word dad in there. And the word is because. And this comes from the book Persuasion, and it's a well-known psychological principle that anything that comes after because is irrelevant, but it gives truth to the thing you've just described. So as an example, there was a long line of people, right? Lined up at the deli counter or at a copier machine, and you just went up and said, hey, can I cut in line? You're gonna have a certain amount of people that say yes, and then other people will be like, hey, wait your, wait your place in line. You go almost to 100% people letting you cut in line. If you say, hey, can I cut in line because, and giving a reason. And what they learned is it doesn't matter what the reason is, just the fact that you have because will cause most people to acquiesce. They'll think of it as truth and as a need. Make sense? So let's look at how that shows up in an advertisement. This is the sort of ad that I see all the time. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I think some are on a small screen. So I'm going to read a little bit of it. Think of this and just compare it to what your job ad might look like today. Outside sales professional wanted Centurion Ruffin, a veteran owned company continues to grow due to our increasing market share and robust customer demand. We're in need of additional outside sales representatives for our roofing division. Our sales team serves a wide range of customers in Northeast Indiana and blah, blah, blah. I'm already tired. You? Right? And then I get down there. Our lucrative commission structure consistently pays over 100K annually. And, and, and it'll go down. I'm not going to continue to read that whole thing for you. I need you to imagine what's actually happening in your candidate's mind they are seeing your ad somewhere have you ever gone onto like amazon and typed in buying a book on sales or you know hr whatever the topic you're trying to research what happens all of these book covers come up right and you sort of the one that catches your eye is the one you look deeper into and then you read the reviews and then right and then you may lead to a purchase think of it like that your job ad is on a job board sitting next to hundreds of other job boards and your candidate is probably just doom scrolling and when they read Centurion Roofing, a veteran owned company continues to grow due to our gift, bleh, they might hit quick apply, but they really haven't given any thought to imagining what working for Centurion Roofing is like. So what would a rewrite look like? All right, what do you notice right away before you even get to the content? If you can see this, if you're on a small screen, you might not be able to see it. What do you notice? Every line is separated and it looks like a text message text message. You actually want to put this, you can take your job ad and as you're writing it, put it in, uh, uh, put, put it in and me measure the reading level of your job advertisement. It should actually be at a fifth grade reading level or less. That's the most compelling way to stand out and for it to get deep into somebody's mind. So, Short, and now notice how I'm describing the person. I'm not describing the job. So it starts out this way. Done working for someone that doesn't get it, that doesn't understand the meaning of loyalty, commitment, and crushing every challenge. Know that you're built for more. If you're ready to be a part of something bigger that actually means something, keep reading. Do you have a hook? Of course you do. You're standing out, right? So now it goes, remember they said previously they were a veteran owned company. Doesn't mean anything. Welcome to Centurion Roofing, not your usual roofing company. We're veteran owned and operated and we know how to build a team that delivers no matter what. In the military, we learned that failure isn't an option. We bring that relentless drive to every project we undertake. We are looking for a sales sniper that has an immediate need to make 125K. In fact, we won't keep you if you don't. Does that have a different feel to it already? Easier to move through it. 
So why work with us? And now notice how they're leaning into painting a picture of them as this veteran owned, motivated, successful company. Mission first, always. We operate like warriors, get the done, job done right. No excuses, no exceptions. We carry the very best product and warranties. Unshakable under pressure. We've been there, done that. We know how to deliver even when the heat is on. Just check out all of our raving fans and five-star reviews. Honor and integrity. We live by a code. We bring that same sense of duty and respect to our work environment. This is an employee position with benefits, not leaving you hanging on your own. So it's going to continue like that. And I won't read the rest of that ad to you. Just by a show of hands, better? You're gonna get better quality candidates. I want you to think your job when you write this job ad is not only to grab attention, it is to repel the people from applying that you don't wanna ha have apply. Think about, um, you ever seen like a commercial for, for uh, uh, the Marines? And they show imagery of people charging the beach and bombs going off and gunfire being laid down. And there's a whole portion of the population, they see that advertisement and they're like, heck no. <laughs> but there's a subset, the subset that they want, that'll raise their hand and say, put me in. Like their heart races and their adrenaline goes up and they're like, yes, I identify with that challenge. And that's what you have to get in your ad. That language, that the action that you want out of them, you have to speak that language and you speak it to them so clearly because you know your avatar, right? It might sound like, wake up today, I'm motivated, had to drop a, Red Bull just to get yourself to work, to show up at a job, only to get a paycheck that barely made it worth getting out of bed. I'm really describing someone, right? That's going through, they're unhappy with the job they have, and now they're motivated to take action. They're gonna remember that advertisement. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the, now that we've got the advertisement out there, the process. Throughout the process, you have to communicate a strong vision and a standard for performance. Every interaction, text message, email, you have to continue to, have to indicate to them that you know what great performance looks like, you're able to reproduce it, and they can trust you. They're making a decision to take a risk on you. Second, speed and clarity on what the process will be. It has to be automated, but human, right? You're not ghosting them. You have candidates ghost you, right? Do no show on interviews. Employers are doing the same thing. That can't be you. That means that you, right from the beginning, you have to say for the right candidate, we'll move quickly, even though we have a robust process. And here's what the process is. It's these three steps. You're gonna do this, this, this. And you're gonna hear from us within 48 hours or within 12 hours or within two hours, why? Think Uber and DoorDash. Have you ever ordered something off a of DoorDash because you're hungry and you ordered the Chalupa or whatever you get from your you know, favorite Mexican cantina? How many times do you look at that app to go, oh, great, the order's finally started. What's taking them so long? Oh, they just turned the corner. They're stuck in traffic. Like we're trained to get feedback now. And looking at that app to zero to get your, you know, your chalupa there faster. But what does it do? It creates this connection and anticipation, right? And it keeps us engaged. Your hiring process has to be that same way. They're expecting it. If you, if they apply and what you're giving them is some static email that says, thanks for applying, we'll be with you shortly. And then you have a phone conversation with them to say, oh, I'll follow back up with you. They're done. From the minute you hook them, that energy has to be pulled all the way through. Technology can help you with that to make it feel fast and human. In your job ad, you should be able to say, we can go from high to hired in eight days and you could have your first paycheck by day, whatever. You gotta be able to have that clear clarity. Secondly, your application process has to be friendly and mobile. 90% of people are applying on their mobile phones. 
So if there, if you, if you go through your application process and you're using something like Paylocity or some of the other archaic software out there, that experience makes you seem out of touch, out of date. And hopefully you're not having anybody fax in resumes. All right. So uh, then the interview, how are we going to conduct that interview? Uh, so I'm going to give you a couple of my shorthand secrets. There's a lot of things you can look for in the interview. If you've done a great assessment, you don't even have to bother with the interview because you know this person has the DNA to be successful and all you're looking for are the things that an assessment can't pick up. What can't an assessment pick up? Well, it's not going to tell you if they have relationship problems. You know, they're going through a divorce. They got drug and alcohol problems. Hopefully you'd catch that in a screen. Like there are a lot of life things that even though somebody has potential, they might not live up to it, right? Because they've destroyed their the the operating system of their life so that's what you want to get in the interview like if you've already qualified that they can do the job they have the dna of somebody that's successful now i'm just looking for is there any dysfunction there that'll stand in the way of me onboarding them and them being successful and secondly do i like them right will they fit in with our culture you don't want to start an interview with that's your screen. I like them, so I'm going to hire them. But once we know they can do the job from data and analytics, then it becomes very important. How will they fit on the team? And do I like them? Right. That's how you build a great company. So what do I look for during that interview process? It is if I can only have one thing, I want to have somebody that is a happy discontent. What I mean by that is that when I talk to them and I talk about their life, they are genuinely a happy person. If they're miserable, they're never going to sell for you. Not at the highest level. People don't like to hang around miserable people. And if they can't show up to the interview happy, you got a problem. But I need to be able to detect that they are discontent with life in some way. They know they could be better. They know they haven't achieved. They don't feel like that they've already won. They feel like there is more yet out for them. If you can get that balance between happy, genuinely happy, right? They're not so discontent that they're depressed. Their discontent drives them to be better. Everybody get the difference between those? It's that happy discontent. If you can get that balance, I would take that almost over any previous skill over almost anything else. Second, in my book, The Sales Boss, I use boss as an acronym for the levers that you can pull to help somebody be successful on your team and to understand why they're un underperforming. So B stands for uh, behavior, right? So with any job, there's behavior. For sales roles, there's certain selling behaviors, right? Do they got to knock on the door. Do they have to have to face-to-face -face appointments. Do they have to follow up. That's behavior. It's not the quality of the behavior. It's just, do they do it? And then O stands for outlook. Outlook's everything going on in their, you know, between their ears. Their view towards themselves, their view towards the industry, the company, their family, all of that stuff, head trash, can get in the way of behavior. So behavior, outlook, and in that order, you always evaluate those in, in that order. If there's underperformance, has their behavior changed? Has their outlook changed? The third thing is skill, that's the quality. They knock, what do they say? What's their script sound like? What's their tone of voice? That's the skill part of it, right? So when you're diagnosing skill, and then the last S is stature. So we've all met somebody, they walk into a room, you immediately know they belong there, right? They have credibility. That comes with time, comes with age. Behavior, outlook, skills, and stature. The most important thing for you to discern in the interview is not the stature, the skill, or the outlook, other than happy discontent. It's the behavior. Have they done the behavior? That's more important than the industry, more important than their job history. Have they done the behavior? Meaning, if you need them to have face-to-face -face conversations with people, have they done it? Right? Uh, if you need somebody to be on the phone, have they been on the phone on a regular basis? I don't care if it's your industry. We're looking for that sort of behavior because it becomes easier to train them. As an example, if you think about somebody, right? If you if, if you were um, taking two people and one have got, one's gone to the gym regularly and the other's never gone to the gym and you gotta get them both in shape, which one do you think is gonna be easier? 
probably somebody that's done the behavior. Even if they haven't gotten the results, the fact that they showed up at the gym every day means it's easier, right? Because now I can focus on the skill of lifting and the skill of eating, and but they've already got the pattern down. And sometimes the pattern of behavior is the hardest thing to get started. Last uh, thing for the interview is that answers don't matter in the interview. And I get people talking all the time about what's the really clever question that I can ask. There's a ton of data, published research, that when a manager gets involved with questions after you've done a healthy assessment and you've you know gone through your checklist, that your hiring results often go down and the turnover goes up when you get a manager having their opinion after an interview. That's how flawed human sensors are. So what are we looking for? The only thing we're looking for in their answers isn't the answer, it's mental flexibility and composure and that they handle pressure and coaching. That's it. Can they, can they be flexible mentally, right? Or do they freeze up? Because why? You're going to teach them what you need to teach them. You're going to put them in uncomfortable situations and they have to be able to fake being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. That's what you want in the interview. And then they need to be able to handle coaching because otherwise you're going to want to poke your eyeballs out when you need to coach them, right? So give them some coaching right in the interview and see how do they deal with it. And I don't care if they improve when I give them the coaching. I care how do they handle the coaching. Right, because I can get better coaching, I can get better results. But if somebody can't hear coaching and you know have the self-esteem uh, to actually try again in the interview, then they're likely going to fail. So uh, let's see in the chat. Let's just get a uh, a one to 10. 10, 10, We're getting value out of this one. You should have gotten off before you even gotten on to the to the thing. Is is this helpful? Any questions? Jack, good. All right. Miller, thank you. 10, 10, good. So since I'm seeing some 10 here, can I can I uh, have the leeway to give you a one minute commercial for who hire? Yes. All right. I'm going to give you a one minute commercial for for who hire then what we have built in our platform is we have created these job blueprints that analyzes your candidate coming in and we compare them to thousands of people whose performance we already know. We call that a job blueprint. It looks something like this. The candidate's taking it through a questionnaire. And then we've wrapped that with a bunch of what you might think of applicant tracking systems. So everything from helping you write the job ad, pushing it out to Indeed, the candidate comes in, our system automatically starts texting with the candidate, rates the candidate, schedules the candidate for your interviews. We do video interviews. So all you have to do is show up and conduct that final interview. We have clients who are doing group interviews. They have 10 people show up for the group interview. It's the first time anybody from their company has actually ever talked to someone is in that group interview and they hire half of the people. So we we remove about 60% of the effort that you spend chasing people and doing that. So when they, when they schedule an interview, they're gonna schedule right on your calendar. It's gonna show as yellow on your calendar that they signed. Our system's gonna automatically continue to remind them the day before. If they respond that they're coming, it's gonna turn green on your calendar. If they don't, it's gonna show red, showing that they're high risk, right, of, of, of no showing on you. The goal is, that you want to be able to always be hiring. And the reason companies don't always hire is because it's so much work. So they get their team full and they put it on pause, right? Because they need a break. And what you really need to do is be able to keep fishing all the time. And our system, once your team is full, we have a, a, a ranking on the job ad that you have out. You can say, I need to hire fast. I need somebody to hit the ground running. I don't have a lot of time to train them. And we're gonna rate the candidate that way. At other times you can say, hey, my team's full. I only wanna be bothered with an interview if you're, if there's somebody going through my hiring pipeline that's predicted to do better than somebody I have on the team. Because of course you're gonna take that, right? And everything else gets automated in between those two points. So that's the uh, core advantage of signing up with Who Hire. Uh, for, for those people who sign up for a demo, you can go to whohire.com. If you want to set up a demo of the platform, if you set a demo up, uh, you don't have to have the demo today, but set an appointment today, whohire.com. We're going to give you 100% no setup fee. 
uh, to get in and give you full white glove treatment uh, doing your setup. So we have a team that's online uh, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern at meethuhire.com. You can get in and get live help. So uh, that's the that's the way you can to, to can do that. And it actually looks like uh, Jenna actually threw a booking widget right in the chat if you'd like to do that. Um, if you found this helpful and uh, Dylan is open to another uh, co-webinar in the future, I'd like to do the next one called The Five Truths About Humans. And this is going to focus on, I got the right person, now how do I onboard them and make sure I don't lose my investment in them and make sure they stay with my company. And this is going to be completely based uh, on the information from my book, The Sales Boss, where we really dive into how do we get inside somebody's head and make sure they do the things that we need them to do to be successful. So with that, I, that's all I have to say. I'm going to open it up to questions, thoughts, comments. Appreciate people on a Friday, on a holiday weekend being here. It means you're committed to your business. Jonathan, you just mentioned, jump off with mute. You mentioned um, that all you have to do is show up to that final interview. So yeah. how long how long does the process usually take from the time that somebody everything's said, custom? So you can okay. set it up however you want. You can set the timelines however you want. You could you you know you could do a video screening call. You could do a phone screening call. You could have a group interview. It's all custom. Good but stuff. what we're what we're taking away is to have to go out on Indeed and mind-numbingly dull screw, scroll through resumes, you know, and play the resume lottery because we're already engaging with that candidate. And unless we predict that candidate to be a strong fit, we're doing the polite thanks but no thanks. And you're and you're and you're in control of that. You can say, look, if they score above an 80, I want this to happen. If they score below 20, I want to say thanks, but no thanks. But I kind of want to take a look at these in the middle. It's all custom. And we help you figure that out. Awesome. All right. Any questions, thoughts, comments? Kim, you were the first in. Was it worth showing up? She's asleep now. Yeah, it was. I, I, I felt like I learned something from you that I hadn't thought about before. Uh, uh, Y'all haven't seen my picture. I've been doing this a long time, but um, but yeah, there was some interesting takes. I I did find it kind of funny because I had to go through um, a different company that my boss is working with, and almost some things are almost completely opposite. Um, but I like your take on it. I think it's fresh and that's what we're trying to do is something along the lines like the comparison between the two job adverse advertisements, you know, yeah. and how they can catch that person. I just I just think that's wonderful. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in learning more. So awesome. Awesome. We try to be a little controversial because we stick with what works. And it seems like a lot of people like that point flip 50 50 have them churn out of their organization. Do you think about that in, in in home services for that for a skilled technician, right? And, and maybe that's not your roofing salesperson, but for a skilled technician where you put training and time and energy and investment in, you know what the turnover number actually is? 68% in 18 months. Dang, that's mind that's bad. numbingly. It blows my mind. That means you've spent all that effort and time and energy and you've onboarded them. And every 18 months, 70% of your effort went straight out the window and you're starting from day one. Like imagine if you could drop that down to 20%. That's why you have to think of it as a half a million. You, like if you get it right, those companies that stay at 68% you know, turnover, they just like can't compete because they're always going to market with rookies. And you've got people out there that are skilled and understand how to get the job done and how to improve their close rate. If you can't keep them around because they were ill-suited for the job to begin with, that's how, that's how you lose. And funny enough, business owners have short memory. Like I've asked a lot of business owners, what's your turnover rate? Eh, you know, I don't know, we could improve. And they remember the superstars and they forget all the p dead bodies, right? And it's always the other, the dead bodies are their fault. It's like, oh, they didn't have a work ethic. Nobody wants to work anymore. These millennials, they, you like, they got a reason. Other than their hiring process is flawed and they're hiring the wrong person. 
And so I get started with a company like that. And the very first thing I do is I said, there's a really easy way to figure out what your turnover rate is. And we're going to ask you for it because we actually want it to improve, right? And we can't improve it if we don't know where we're at. Like, let's, let's do a health checkup. Just tell me how many W-2s you issued last year or how many 1099s if you're paying people on 1099. How many of those did you do based at, against your team size? And we'll find people that have 10 people currently on the team and they've issued 40 W-2s. Those are like 30 people that have come in and left. Some of them within a month or two of the day they were hired. That's the problem we're trying to fix. Awesome. All right. Well, Jonathan, thanks a lot for uh, for taking time to to unpack all that. And we're going to be sending as many people your way as possible because every single one of our members in our group needs help with this. Every single one. I mean, there may be some, a few, a handful, like less than 10 that really have this down. So thanks a lot for uh, being a part of the group, man. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate the invite. I look forward to getting to know all of you. The promise you have from Who Hire is that we're always going to be side by side with you. We're not just a technology play. We have live humans. You can jump in with no appointment, always get help with people who know your business. In fact, we know sometimes we're dealing with small contractors. So when your HR person goes out on leave, they can just call in and say, hey, can they cover this for me while I'm gone? And our team knows your process and we kick in and help, you know, do the things that that person normally does to keep your business running. So have a great weekend. Enjoy your uh, long holiday weekend.